Thanks for watching Sports.com. I'm Michael Artsis. It's sport, content, and entertainment. And because of that, we have a very special guest joining us. She's an award-winning columnist for the Boston Globe, writing about books and mysteries. And she's also an author herself. The author of Never Tell a Lie and this new standalone book, Come and Find Me, Hallie Efron joins us via the phone. Hallie, how are you doing? Thanks for joining us. I'm great, Michael. How are you today? I'm excellent. Um, I just Good. finished the book. I really, really liked it. I thought it was one of those books that kept me on the edge of my seat and, and had me going. I didn't, uh, I didn't know which, which direction it was going to go in. And I'm the type of person when I read a mystery um, or a thriller, I like to try and figure it out as I go along. And if, if you can trick me, I feel like it's pretty good. I certainly enjoyed but reading it. You can't see me, but I'm grinning because I, uh, that's, of course, music to an author's ears. If I, particularly this kind of book, if I can surprise you, then I feel like that's the brass ring, you know, because you, you know, you, you line everything up and you try to make the novel go in a particular direction, and then you want to surprise the reader because that's what makes page turner. Now, there are a couple things I want to get to about the book, and there are a couple issues that kind of are raised, I think, in the book, and, and we can get to those. But I want to ask a couple of questions about leading up to this book. You've, you've written a series, and I think that that's always probably exciting, but this is a standalone. How does a standalone come about? Well, it, you know, it's, uh, in a series, you've got characters that uh, you've already put in motion. They have a life going on, so you kind of pick up where you left off with their personal stories and introduce a mystery. With a suspense novel that's a standalone, you're starting from ground zero. You're starting from uh, putting characters on a page in a situation and inventing them from scratch, trying not to repeat yourself, because obviously people who read the last book and want to read this one don't want to read the same book. They also don't want a book that's so different that they think, wait a minute, I don't really get this author. So your challenge is to come up with a really compelling idea that uh, will grab the reader and also interest you, because it takes a long time to, to, to write a book. You were asking me before we started how long it took. This took two years. So I have to be interested enough in the idea to keep writing. Well, you certainly have to be invested in it. How do you come up with an idea like this, especially when you're used to writing a series or you've been writing a series? This idea came slowly to me. Um, it started when I saw an ad, believe it or not, in Costco's website. I was not writing, <laughs> shopping on the Internet, and there was this ad for a year's supply of freeze-dried food, a beautiful array of cans and, and pastel colors, and for $999, it would buy you, it said, quote, peace of mind, and I thought, what kind of character would consider spending that kind of money for this and for who and for who who would consider this peace of mind and i thought well it would have to be somebody who's afraid somebody who's been traumatized somebody who's staying home and expects the worst will happen because it's already happened and my you know that uh character came to me diana highsmith who's the main character in the book she's barricaded herself inside the house and she is afraid to go out she lost her best friend, her lover, in a climbing accident in the Alps. She used to be very uh, adventurous, and now she's pretty much shut down, and she lives on the Internet. Um, and so I thought, well, if she lives on the Internet, well, where does she live? And that uh, started me exploring the, you know, was there a virtual world on the Internet where she could run a business, where she could shop, where she could climb virtual Alps? And um, there is, it turns out. How much research did you have to do for this? Because I might imagine that you're not, you're not spending all your time in this internet world, and you're, you don't, I, maybe you do, but I imagine you probably don't have an avatar, and, and, and you're not running an IT business or a security business on the internet. So how did you, and you don't have it set up so you don't have to leave your house, how did you do the research for all this and really get a feel of the character. And that was what I felt was so important, both because, you know, you write this kind of stuff and it has to be easy for the reader to understand. I don't have a camera in 3D and, you know, all that stuff that makes Avatar so easy to understand. So putting it on a page was really a challenge and I needed to understand it pretty well. 
So yeah, actually I did create myself an avatar. I went to this uh, virtual uh, place in cyberspace called Second Life. Uh, where companies are now running, um, they own islands and they run training for their uh, employees all over the world so they don't have to fly them in and out. There's uh, all kinds of recreation going on in Second Life, including, I'm sure, plenty of porn. But um, I got myself an account. I made myself an avatar, which wasn't that hard. I went into their through their front gate, which is this sort of training area, and I figured out how to get her to run and walk. And but I, you know, I'm not I'm not a gamer, so I, I couldn't figure out quite how to get her to avoid running into walls. And <laughs> she was bumping into furniture, and I got her to sit down, but I couldn't get her to stand up. And eventually, I got her flying because these it's really cool. You it's like. I felt like a Harry Potter, you know, perched on top of Buckbeak's shoulders as I'm watching her soaring. And, and you know, you, you're watching from behind your avatar's head, so it's like kind of like a first-person shooter game. And she's soaring over Second Life's island and out over the water, and then, of course, she fell in the water. And I couldn't get her out. What do you think of all yeah. this? Are you still are you still uh, participating in Second Life? No, no, that was about <laughs> it for me. And you know, my computer's not doesn't have a huge amount of horsepower, and you kind of do need a fair amount for it to for things to res quickly, which means you go from one place to another, and all the pixels come on the screen, and you can see where you are when you don't have a really powerful computer. It takes longer. Well, so you I a... knew I was overmatched, so I, instead I went and begged people who knew <laughs> Second Life to let me watch them. Yeah, you definitely need a, you need a good graphics card, you need a du probably dual or quad processor for your computer, a lot of RAM, a good internet connection. Uh, exactly. These things definitely help. Uh, Have you been on, on Second Life? Uh, no, no. Uh, I've seen it, uh, you know, I think I saw the Lawnmower Man uh, growing up, followed by Total Recall. Um, oh, yeah. You know, and a couple of other Tim Burton movies that had nothing to do with the internet, but scared me enough to realize that I don't <laughs> want to be in a fantasy world. I like reality. But I'm, I, what right. I, my next question to you before we get into the book, and I really want to get into it, and we've talked a little bit about it, but is that do you think that in the future that this this will be a common thing that people will have avatars and really never leave their home or their computers, and you know whether it's Fresh Direct or something else, have their food delivered and and all this stuff and. Do you think we're going towards a virtual world where we can't tell the difference between fiction and reality and, and uh, we, it's to total recall, lawnmower man comes to life? Well, I think for some people we're already there, but no, I, don't, I certainly don't think I will ever, ever go there. And I think for a lot of people it, it's not going to happen. But, you know, kids uh, use the Internet to arrange meetings, real meetings with each other. You know, it becomes a, a, a way of facilitating your, your real-life encounters. Uh, people find people to date and then meet them in the real world. I, I just think it's, you know, it's just another way. It's a great thing. I, I mean, I love shopping on the Internet, not having to go somewhere. But I certainly can't buy shoes because they never fit. So, you know, you're always going back and forth between what makes sense and what doesn't make sense to do. Don't tell that to Zappos.com. Well, I, I love Zappos, and, of course, I've returned more shoes than I've bought there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't figure out how they make money to this day. I think more more people return shoes, more shoes yeah. than they buy is, is, is the case. I, I don't know. I'm not a big internet shopper. Uh, I understand the convenience. It has to be something that I know a lot about because I want to touch it and feel it and see it. I want to know that this is the product I want. How did you, how did you come up with the way? I don't want to give away too much of the book. It's such a great book. Come and find me. You got to go check it out. Uh, you got to buy it. You got to read it. You're going to love it. It's a page turner, so you're not going to want to put it down. Um, but how did you get Diana out of the house? How did you? I, I know how you did it by reading, but how did you come up with that way to do it? You know, she's she's as you said, she's lost her lover and her best friend, and uh, to a climbing accident, and she's become reclusive. How'd you how'd you figure out how to do that? Well, I felt like I needed a two-prong attack to get her out of the house. One was her sister disappears, and her sister's the only person in the world who she still really sees day to day. And if she's disappeared and Diana tries to get the police to believe that she's disappeared and they don't, uh, so uh, that's, that was one thing she would need to, to leave. The, the second thing was I needed to make her office, her life, 
the internet where she lived all of a sudden seem at least as unsafe as the outside world, um, which I did. And but, the uh, my, third way was um, I'll, I'll thought... I'll let you finish, yeah. Yeah, I'll let you finish, because I have a question to follow up. Yeah, and then the third thing was I, she needed armor, in a way, to go out in the world. And, um, and I won't say exactly what, but, but there's a way that she actually sort of assumes a disguise, which helps her leave. And so I guess my follow-up question to that is, how did you come up with all of this? How did you figure out that this is what you needed to get her out of the house? Well, I mean, I sort of knew when I wrote the, I wrote a synopsis of the book before I wrote the book. And I don't remember how much of that was actually in it, but I think most of it was. I certainly knew that this would be about a woman whose sister disappears. I wanted to write about sisters. Um, I have a lot of them. and uh, How many? It seemed like, I have three sisters. Wow. Yeah, so I knew I wanted to write about that special, re and I have, I have two daughters. Uh, who are wonderful sisters. So I wanted to write about the relationship between sisters. I knew that. And I knew I wanted to explore this, how safe is the real world versus how safe is cyberspace. You know, I, I'm one of these people, I look at my computer screen and I see that little pinhole over the screen and I think, I wonder if someone's looking back at me. <laughs> yeah. And you know, when you go in Google and, you, and you're surfing around and, and all of a sudden you're seeing ads for shoes when you just bought a pair of shoes? And they're watching. That's Creepy, yeah. How do you get such emotion and, and paint such a vivid picture? Because I really imagine this, and I know everybody who reads it imagines it a little differently, but I really imagine this in, in what I would say clarity when I'm reading it. How are you able to do that? I think, I think all of us in, in my generation and probably yours and younger are kind of, we cut our teeth on the inter, on, on, in cinema and in television, and I think cinematically I really do when I write a book I imagine that I'm in the narrator's head one of the characters in the scene is telling the story and I'm like a camera looking out of that character's eyes I'm in that character's gut I feel what she feels I smell what she smells and I try to put that on the page and by staying in that character's head um, to whatever extent I can stay in her head, that's to the extent that I think I succeed in creating that kind of visceral feeling that you are there. Well, I think it's a great way of doing it. Uh, when you explain it like that, it makes a lot of sense. It's very much like the videos we put together here. I see them in my head cinematically as we're doing them. I see how they flow together, almost like I'm watching myself and the team produce the videos. So it makes perfect sense, and, and it certainly comes out really, really well. What's next for you? What, what's the next move? Well, I've got another book underway. I'm just uh, negotiating a two-book contract with my publisher, Happily. And uh, the first one is about uh, a third of the way finished. It's, I can only say it's about a young woman and, an, and a very old woman. And uh, it's set in the Bronx. Excellent. Well, I look forward to that. I don't know how you do it, how you knock out story after story. That's excellent especially when you do it in a one or even a two year period, back to back and very close together. I love this book. Come, find, come and find me. It's on stands now. You got to check it out. I promise you, if you pick up this book and you read it, you will enjoy it. You'll sit on the edge of your seat for the entire time. You'll be surprised and you'll be entertained. And in addition to that, you will turn page after page very quickly. You probably will lose a night or two of sleep because you won't be able to go to bed. You'll just keep reading. You'll read through, which is what I did. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Thank you very much. Hallie Efron joining us via the phone line on sports.com. We hope to have her on again soon to talk more about books and also her next project. This is Come and Find Me, excellent novel. Check it out. I'm Michael Artsis, sports.com. Thanks for joining us. Be terrific.